Now, if you're waiting for a transplant, the chances of an, or that an organ should be a moment of relief, but instead it can often throw up an agonising dilemma. Figures obtained by this programme show an increasing number of donated organs are being classed as high risk, that is from heavy smokers, cancer sufferers or the very old. So what do you do? Is any organ better than none? And should doctors be required to tell patients the organ on offer does come with potential risks? Our health and social affairs correspondent Victoria MacDonald has this exclusive report. Transplant surgery at Papworth Hospital in Cambridgeshire. In this case, donor lungs that will give this young patient a chance to live. Certainly without them, she would have died. Because many waiting for new organs do. There is a chronic national shortage of donors. We have the second worst figures in Europe. And now Channel 4 News can reveal that this shortage has led to a dramatic increase in the number of transplants using high-risk organs from smokers, drug users, patients who've had cancer. So increasingly, this is the dilemma that transplant patients are having to face. They're desperately sick. They need a new heart or liver or kidney. They've been waiting for months, if not years, and then suddenly the doctor comes to them and says, great news is, we've found an organ, but it's from somebody in the high-risk group. They've smoked, or they've had cancer, or they've taken drugs. This is literally a life and death decision for that patient. A Freedom of Information request by Channel 4 News and Open World News has revealed that in the past decade, the age of donors has risen. A third of organs now come from the over 60s. The proportion of donor kidneys classed as high risk has doubled to more than 40%. The number of organs donated from people with a history of drug use or of cancerous tumours has also doubled. And almost half of all donated organs come from smokers. Shocking, perhaps, but according to this transplant surgeon, necessary. If you've got, let's say, a liver patient who is ill but not in immediate risk of dying, you may decide not to take a risk from an organ from a donor, say, with a history of cancer. Whereas if you have somebody who is going to die from acute liver failure within 24 hours, you'll almost take anything because a 5% risk of tumour transmission, for example, is important, but if you balance that against the risk of 95% chance of being dead before the next liver comes along, I think it's, the answer is fairly straightforward. The shortage is not simply from a lack of donors. Fewer young people are dying in accidents, medical advances are saving lives, all good news, except for those who need a transplant. You can see the problem immediately when you look at the figures. Last year, there were only 1,200 donors in the UK, yet there were 10,000 people in need of a transplant, and 7,000 of them were actively waiting, yet three of those patients died every day because the phone call to say they had an organ never came. This is the reason why we went public, otherwise we wouldn't have gone public even. Yeah. Yet the use of high-risk organs has raised another issue, patient consent. Jennifer Wedderall, who had cystic fibrosis, died from cancer after being given lungs from a middle-aged 20-a-day smoker. The hospital had not told her this. She maintained afterwards, you know, when she found out, um, you know, if someone comes to you and says, Here's some lungs, but if someone, you know, more than twice your age, smoking 20 a day, you know, there's a lot of inherent risks in that as well. Um, she was quite clear that she would have said no and took her chances and waited. There were actually guidelines in place, but now the family is campaigning, they call it Jennifer's Choice, to ensure they are being followed, that patients are fully informed. And they check everything that's... Um... Yet Robert is quite clear about his choice. He has a liver tumour and his doctors at the Queen Elizabeth Hospital in Birmingham have told him that without a transplant he may only have another five years. If you were presented with an organ that was in that at-risk category, would you accept it? Yes. Without hesitation? Without hesitation, because it does, there's risks in the operation anyway uh, and the, the risks, the goods outweighs the bad. 
And that is what it comes down to, weighing up the risks and balances. Ideally, doctors would not have to use the lungs of smokers or the livers of a drug user. But there are simply not enough donor organs for the patients who will otherwise die. Well, Victoria McDonald is with me. A, a shocking report. And I thought that the government started tinkering with consent as long ago as 2007. What happened? Well, there have been a lot of discussions over the years about s systems like opting out, which they have in countries like Spain and Sweden. And they did look at it very carefully and have from time to time gone back to it. But no system seems to be perfect. So, for instance, in Sweden, they have fewer donations than we have here. In Spain, they have more, but when Spain was asked, they said that it actually came down to having a very good system where the doctors and the nurses make sure they go to the families and talk to them. There was a really startling statistic, which I couldn't put in my piece, which is sort of preying on my mind in a way, that, that when asked, 90% of people say they would accept an organ donation but 45% said that they would say no to donating their organs. And you can see that problem there. The figures just are not matching up when there is such a shortage. So something does need to change. They just haven't found the perfect system yet to increase those organs.